Mike Sofinda. It's me, Mike Sofinda. Me, Mike Sofinda. It's me, Mike Sofinda. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, it's time for your weekly fix of funny. Broadcasting on radio in Fort Bragg, 107.7 FM, KNYO. Grab a mimosa, take your pants off, and treat yourself to the sexy bald man who makes you tingle in your special place. I was talking about your heart. <laughs> he's wrong, but he's so right. He's brilliant, he's insightful, but also at times he's got the intelligence of a cup of dirt. Here we go, it's the Me, Mike, Self, and I show, starring Mike Bingo! Hello, 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 and welcome to another exciting episode of Me, Mike, Self, and I, and I am your host, Mike Betancourt, episode 117. It is Thursday. We are having fun. I'm wearing a, 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 a kind of sequence shirt, hula shirt that is, you know, whatever it is, and Utah, get me too. If you don't know what Utah Get Me To is, well, let me break it down to you, MMIkers, real quick. It is from Point Break. Not the remake, okay? There's no such thing as a remake with Point Break, okay? That remake was garbage. It was trash. I refused to watch it. I had no idea. I said, there's a remake of, of, of Point Break? No, 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 no. That's just a piece of crap movie. That's what that is. And normally, I don't knock on movies, but I'm not going to watch that movie because, first of all, you don't have Keanu Reeves, Okay, whenever you have a movie without Keanu Reeves, is it worth watching? Huh, cha, huh, probably not. Huh, cha. And then you got Gary Busey, Utah, get me too. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, let me calm down and let me show you what I am talking about. I'm so happy. It's it's Thursday. I love this show and I'm glad you're here, folks. So hold on. Let me uh, tone it down and I'll show you Utah, get me too. Angelo, it's 10.30. Right around that corner, there is a sandwich shop. They sell meatball sandwiches. Best I've ever tasted. Would you go get me two? Come on, partner. Two. Come on, partner. Two. Thank you. Thank you. What the hell is that he's reading? Oh, it's a newspaper. Utah, get me two. Yeah, Utah, get me two. That's two shots, two blunts, two drinks, whatever you want today. It's Thursday, Utah, get me two. And I'm excited. Let me see who's here already. Let's see who's here. Who is here? So funny, but you do you see? I wish I could see you laughing, Bleach Sauce. That's a cool name, by the way. S sounds kind of gross, but Bleach Sauce. Meh. Okay. I don't know what this means, Bleach Sauce, but. Thanks for watching the show. Appreciate it. Anyways, uh, cool. Let's move on. Move forward. Move forward. Let's move forward to what's important. Uh, it's baseball season. Huh? See that? My A's. 50 years. Yeah. Have everyone been watching uh, baseball? Kind of, sort of, before it goes away. <laughs> Have you seen it? I. You know what? I love the season. I am having a good time with it. I am enjoying the fake fans, the cardboard cutouts. Everyone's getting pissed off. I can't watch baseball right now. It's stupid. It's COVID. What do you expect? Okay. What do you expect? Okay. It's COVID. You're going to have fake fans. You're going to have to deal with it. Okay. R grow up. All right. Just quit crying about baseball. There's no crying in baseball. Didn't they teach you? Didn't Tom Hanks teach us that? There's no crying in baseball. Utah, get me too. Didn't they teach you that? Okay, so relax. I love the cardboard cutouts. I think it's great. It's like a video game, watching it live in my very own home because goodness, what else can we do right now during COVID times? Absolutely nothing. So buck up, relax, and watch it. What? Oh, hey, hold on, hold on, Mr. Matthew Robinson. What's up, Mr. Matthew Robinson? You can't have Point Break. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Someone that believes in Point Break. You cannot have Point Break without Busey and Keanu Reeves. And who else? Uh, Bob. Basketball started today, too. Yes. 
but there's no fans and I, and people are still complaining. There's no fans. Yeah. Let's focus on baseball real quick. Let's focus on Dr. Fauci's pitch. I know everyone is talking about it, but I'm going to show you something. First of all, everyone's seen Dr. Fauci's pitch. Okay. We all, it's been the, the talk of the town. It's been the news, but I'm going to show you anyways, Dr. Fauci's pitch. And then I'm going to do some comparison because Dr. Fauci's pitch is remarkable. So let's watch Dr. Fauci's pitch. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go back. This is watch it again. Well known. Let's watch it again. Washington National fans. <laughs> it didn't even make it across. It just went, <laughs> and I get it. Okay, you're nervous, Mr. Fauci, Dr. Fauci. You're nervous. Okay, you got other things to worry about. But do me a favor, Mr. Fauci, Dr. Fauci. Please practice at least one hour before uh, pitching time. At least you don't even have to get it across the plate. As long as it's straight, that's all that matters, okay? And everyone's giving Dr. Fauci crap, but guess what? You know who had a worse pitch than that? You know who had way worse, way worse, more worse? The worst pitch, the horrible, disgusting, degrading pitch? I'll show you, okay? I will show you who had a worse pitch than that. And I am, that's why, first of all, I'm on Dr. Fauci's side, okay? He's got other things to worry about. This person has no excuse. And this person is 50 cent watch 50 cents pitch this is terrible look at first of all he's taking curtis yeah jackson. yeah curtis jackson i'm taking pictures and watch this pitch pitch was not <laughs> Just a bit of <laughs> you have curtis no jackson. look and he's taking pictures beforehand he's like cents. yeah yeah i'm 50 cent find me in curtis the club jackson. find curtis me in the club jackson. i'm a thug and you can't be a thug was not you lose all credibility with a pitch like that, one more time. Because look, look how conceited he is this, beforehand. Uh, yeah, what's up? 50 what's cents. Up? I'm 50 Cent. Curtis yeah, Jackson. Just, Curtis yeah. Jackson. I was in movies. And his and first one pitch more time. Sklagen. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to make fun of Dr. Fauci, make sure you make fun of 50 Cent first before anything else, okay? Because his was worse, and he's young, and he has nothing else to do when he's not working. So, okay? All right. That's my monologue. Now, folks, we have a great show tonight. I'm very excited to have a good friend of mine. He is a comedian. He is a producer. Drew Burks is here, and he's here to promote his show. But before we do that, before we bring him up, before I show you his comedy act, um, we need to take a quick Nick Nolte break. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another episode of Nick's Fury, Episode 3. You're listening to Nick's Fury with Nick Nolte here on Me, Mike, Self, and I. This show is about the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And if you don't like it, I don't give a damn. I'm Nick Nolte. Go f*** yourself, America. Episode 3, Racism. Shut up and dribble. What the hell are you talking about? The problem with racism is that people are stupid, plain and simple. It's not my fault that you want to have sexual relations with your sister, so you take your rage out on black people. As a matter of fact, black people are better than all of us in every single way. They're stronger, faster, smarter, and black guys have a massive rooster. Trust me, I know. On the set of Blue Chips, I saw Shaquille O'Neal's black rooster and it was a mile long. Good Lord Almighty. It had its own hose and different area codes. So of course racist people are going to feel inferior, self-loathing, and ignorant. Don't hate the player. Hate your DNA. Black don't crack. I'm Nick Nolte. Go f*** yourself, America. <laughs> don't hate the player. Hate your DNA, racist people. All right. Let's get the show rolling. He's been waiting very patiently. I'm going to show you a quick clip of his wonderful act. He's a good friend of mine. This is Drew Burks at the Guild Theater, and you're going to love it. Here we go. You're not doing that. You go when the youth go in there, huh? When y'all in there jamming, doing it. You borderline going to hell. One more little bit, you know. <laughs> I see some of your holy ghosts. Some of your holy ghosts look suspect. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this comedian slash producer, he has worked with the likes of Paul Mooney, Scruncho, and Mark Curry. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man, my friend, your friend, the comedian. Here he is, Drew Burks. What up? What up? What Drew up, Burks, man. How you doing, brother? Thank you for being on me, Mike, Self, and I, sir. Hey, it's an honor, buddy. I, that's such an honor. Thank that's you. awesome man that's awesome dude so you got a show coming up right yes yes i Whoa. have a show on august 8th at esther's park uh we doing you know because it's COVID, and so we doing an outside comedy show that's so awesome we're doing it at a park we the guild theater also has a park um that we have called esther's park and so we're doing an outside comedy show Cool. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Guild Theater and how you got started with uh, working with the Guild Theater? So the Guild Theater, actually, I work with an organization called St. Hope Development. So we do all the property management for the uh, for St. Hope Development, and that also includes the Guild Theater. So I get the best of both worlds. I work in the daytime doing the property management for that, and I do my own shows inside the Guild Theater. Oh, you do the property management for the Guild Theater? Yeah. Damn! So you could be like, you guys want your rate, uh, rent raise? No, then uh, you should come to my comedy show. <laughs> there it is. Right. That's cool, man. Yeah, How long man. Have you been doing that? Uh, two years now. I've been there two years. Yes. Nice. So, as yeah. property, or uh, what got you? What made you decide to go to the Guild Theater? So basically, through the organization, uh, which is an organization owned by uh, Kevin Johnson, is. I had been through that program with St. Hope and I'd work, I did a lot of work with them, but then there was an opportunity for me to start doing shows there. And then when I started doing shows there, Kevin came to me and was like, look, you keep doing all these shows, you keep doing this, you might as well just come work for me and then you can do all the shows you want to. And basically ever since then it's been on. That's great, man. You know, it's so funny. I, I've I've known you for what 10, 10 plus years? Yeah, 10 right? plus years, bro. 10 plus years, man. This is the first time I've seen you just subtle and just like, <laughs> yes, this is an interview here on yeah. me, myself, and I. It's greeting salutations. I like to I was a property manager. <laughs> you gotta relax, brother. This is me, myself, and I, man. We're here to have fun, you know. <laughs> you know funny is I, every time I I talk to you. It's like, I always tell you, I look up to you because when we had the punch line, you talk to me in the green room and you give me such great structure. And then, and then you immediately say that after we talk, you say, oh, man, just do you. All the time, man. All the time. You're like, oh, dude, it's it's we're we're, we're, we're live. <laughs> but real quick. Uh, Captain Bob says, what up, Drew Burks? Hey, what's up, Captain Bob? That's awesome, man. So uh, how did you get started in stand up? Man, I kind of like most people, I started doing a lot of open mics. It's crazy. And it happened like in 2003. I, my friend of mine signed me up for this open mic night. And it was at this bar, uh, Cheers, on Franklin and, and Broadway. And they okay. used to open mic comedy. And I went up there and I just started talking about people, you know, in the audience. So when I started talking about the people in the audience, they started laughing. But then I started putting little jokes in it and started talking about myself. And then they just kept laughing. And I didn't see what was so funny. <laughs> but they kept going. And so each week I would come back. And then after a while, then the money started coming in. And I was like, all right, you mean to tell me I get paid to do this? Soon? There you go. That's what it is. Like, oh, yeah. now I have a true calling for stand-up comedy. <laughs> it is. So once that started happening, it, it was on after that. I just took off. Just let's go. That's great, man. And you've been hitting it hard, man. Since yeah, even before right. COVID, you've been hitting it hard. So that's great. So what made you decide to go to that open mic and decide to be like, I'm going to be a comic today. I decide. No, I, I was hanging out with some friends, bro. I wouldn't even trip. I was oh, okay. hanging out with some friends and they was like, you the funny one in the group anyway. So 
you need to do it because these other people is is just trash. It's kind of like a karaoke night, you know. Okay. And they was like, "Oh, these, these, you just trash. They they trash. You hacking funny." So I did it, and all of a sudden I just caught that bug, and it was on ever since. Like, on. I started meeting people. I started doing other places, and it was on. What was your What was your big break? What was your big breakthrough? My big breakthrough is probably when I did the show with Scruncho. Of like my first like big show like it was a trip and we did it um we did it in oakland and i was like i felt good too i was like hey i'm going to oakland felt like i was going on tour <laughs> <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you tell everybody who uh for those who don't know who scruncher is why don't you uh give them a little so, heads up he's a um, he's a comic uh based out of la he was in the movie how high with uh mike epps and he was the assistant pimp and then he's done a lot of stand up with uh, Bad Boys of Comedy. Um, he was on Def Jam too. And so I got the opportunity to open up for him. And once I did that, everything just started flowing. It was just started taking off. Here, here, for those who, here's a scrunch of from yeah. How High. Yeah. You guys will record. Run, run, once you see this, you're going to be like, oh, okay, I know who Scrunch is. Here he is. Costume party, place level house. Time. Friday. It is Friday. Well, that's what she told Coco Butter. Now, these bitches better be out here getting my money. Hell, back is my bottom bitch. You know that, right? Right, right. Okay, now the bitch better be out here checking my motherfucking money. Please don't, don't cuss. You know, when I'm trying to listen to the word. What did I say? You said, you bitch. Ain't in the Bible. I know, bitch, and neither is motherfucker. So drive this motherfucking car. And you know, you are a, a, a assistant pimp. You ain't even a, a real pimp. So you're supposed to be co-signing to the shit that I say. You want to lose your job? I'm going to pull your motherfucking application. Then let's practice it. Where's my bitches? Where's my bitches? Where's my bitches? Where's my bitches? You got to say it together. It goes in together. Where my bitches? Where my bitches? Okay, check this out. Where my bitches? Where my bitches? Can't we just say employees? What about you? Employees? <laughs> oh, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> you know and for and he had a, he, he didn't have a small part he had a huge part yeah, in that movie yeah. like, um so what was it like working with him uh, as your first time working with him so it was cool because he he said he wasn't all like you know when you open up for some people they'll be like okay you only getting 10 minutes that's it right you know what i mean don't try to do extra don't try to do nothing he came at me when we was in the, you know how they have it, the green room. Mm -hmm. you, know they, you know how they do, right? So when he brought me, when he brought me in there, he said, "Hey man, just do you, do whatever you want to do. You funny. I already seen you before. You hecka funny. So just go ahead and do you." And he said, "Uh, you got you got ten minutes, but if they feeling you, do fifteen. That's good. That's folks. If you don't understand, ten minutes right. on a, what was it like a Friday or Saturday night show? Yeah, it was like on a Friday." Okay, Friday, Friday uh, for, for people that don't understand, Friday night primetime show is meant for the headliner show yeah. and feature and the MC. So yeah. for him to give an extra five minutes yeah. at a show is right. beyond remarkable. You right. usually get like three to five, sometimes five to seven minutes. Yeah. But you got 15. 15. Wow. What do you say after you said? He was like, see, that's what you're supposed to do. See, you like skiing. See, I like that. And he, and he kept laughing. He said, I like that. He said, oh, boy, you. You, <laughs> you do a pretty good impression of him, of him by the way. Hold on, hold on. Say, say, where my bitches? Yeah, where my bitches? <laughs> <laughs> say, bitch, better have my money. Where's my bitch? <laughs> but he so, was so, what? He was so down that's good. So, what did you learn from watching him do stand up right after your set? I'm sure you were on a high, no. first of all. Yeah. So you're on a natural to, high. But then when I came out, you know, you're trying to hurry up and get everything you can out. One, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five. You, right. You're not chopping nothing up. You know, you're just going straight through. Kind of like a run on sentence. You know what I mean? Right. But when I seen him, he brought you to the beginning of the joke, the middle, and the end. I mean, and, and stretched them out so seamlessly. Like, you know, because he'd been doing them so much and he just stretched him out like wow how long has he been doing stand-up how long was oh, he doing stand-up at that been, time he's been doing it at least since 96. wow really oh yeah. I, his, he must be on a whole different level of stand-up comedy he was on the second season 
I, I believe the second or the third season of BT Comic View. Mm -hmm. And then he, he did the Def Jam. And then that's when How High and all that came in the 2000s. He really started picking up. That's when he started blowing up yeah. from, from How High. So right. you met him at the peak. Yes. And you worked with him at that yeah. peak. Where was this at? It, it was in Oakland at the uh, Paramount, the little theater. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, How many people were there? Man, it was like it was like eight hundred people, bro. Eight hundred. Yeah. How long were you doing stand up at that time? When you, uh... I was doing stand up. It was uh, a year and a half. Holy crap! It was me, Insane Wayne, and then some other dude. Oh man, Insane Wayne too, folks. We're we're gonna have Insane Wayne on the show yeah. pretty soon, but wait till you see him. He's hilarious, but. And Insane Wayne's been doing it, you know, 20 plus years. So yeah. Scrunch has been doing it 20 plus years. And then they threw you 15 yeah. minutes right. a year in. Right. Oh, my God. Wow. What a that, huge opportunity. And Eric it was wild. What was that like when after during your set and after? Well, during the set, it was like with me, I just read the crowd. So I'm looking at the crowd. So I'm already knowing to talk about. I'm talking about bait, Oakland stuff. You know the difference between Sacramento and Oakland, right? And so I was relating to them, so they understood. So they was going crazy, and then I talk about myself, and they really went crazy. And after that, it was on. I was I was juiced. What did What did it feel like after you were like as soon as you got off the crowd off the stage? As that soon as I got off the stage, I I felt like, oh my god, this is it. This is right. it right here. I'm I'm unstoppable. That's when you knew. And everybody was like. Ah, you crazy little dude you crazy you know what i'm saying right so that's it was on wow that's amazing what a journey and then from there you worked with paul mooney yeah i worked with paul mooney too now that one was a little different okay it was a little different okay you, you don't have to say he was a little it's kind of rude bro okay right? well i'm gonna you know i'm gonna stop you right there because I, yeah. I i don't want you to say anything that yeah. you don't want to be said yeah. but you also worked with mark curry yes Okay, why don't you tell us about Mark Curry then? What was it? When did you get a chance to work with him? I worked with him two times. Uh, one, I worked with him at Tommy T's. Okay. And when I worked with him at Tommy T's, we did two shows together. And the shows was cool. They went perfect. But the crowd was real small. So it wasn't like they was coming out showing him too much love for some reason. Hmm. So then what happened is, is, I told him, hey, I got my own theater. And I'm guaranteed we're going to sell this out. Oh, so this is just recently? Yeah, this was just recently. Wow. Yeah. So I said, I get you. I said, I'm going to get you on the show. I'm going to get you on my show. And then he started texting me. And so I started texting him back. I was like, what's up? And he was like, man, I want to get on. You told me he was going to get me on. Get me on. So we worked it out. I got him out here. It's crazy because it was a year ago today. A year wow. ago. Wow. Right? He came out here. When I mean to tell you, like, I'm hosting. Plus, you know when you host, you have to do at least 10 minutes in between, maybe five, depending on how the other comics do, right? Mm -hmm. This dude, when he came on stage, I watched a Jedi night. This dude stood up for the first 20 minutes and just did a whole set in the crowd. Then he turned around and sat down and did another hour and a half. So he stood up, did stand up comedy, ripped yes. into the crowd. Yes. Then sat down, did an hour and a half of just. Did an hour and a half, bro. Sat down. Wow. Like, like me and you were sitting down right now and did it like it was nothing. Wow. Hold on, folks. I'm going to show you Mark Curry's uh, quick stand-up real quick. To see somebody on TV is different because, you know, you don't have that connection. Oh, crap. What the hell? What the hell is this? Seriously? You're going to have Trump before Mark Curry? What the hell is that? Remember, my brother, how bad it got in Oakland. They broke into the zoo and stole some monkeys, the crack addicts. That's how bad shit was. I guess they were doing crack and hurt them animals and got ideas. <laughs> You think what I'm thinking? They're behind bars. They must be worth something. Let's go get them out there. Broken to the zoo. They was fucked up. He needed some crack real bad. He was selling them. Hey, what's up, man? Can I talk to you for a minute? Go, Nick.
Check it out, man. Come on. Come on. Do I talk to you for a minute, nigga? Can I talk to you for? Touch this out, nigga. Could you come a little bit closer, nigga? <laughs> I don't want to shout this shit out. Touch this out. Uh, check this out, nigga. Uh, you want to buy some monkeys? <laughs> monkeys, motherfucker. Monkey. Nigga, I don't know what kind of monkey. Shit, Alaskan monkey. Or like an archaeologist to you? No, nigga, I can't let you see them. They in this bag. I let them out. I'm trying to knock these mother... <laughs> and that, dude, folks, that was just a minute of hilarity. Right. Right. That alone was just a minute long. So imagine an hour and a half of 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 Mark Curry just crushing it, bro. When I mean to tell you, I was sitting, I'm I'm sitting behind stage, right? Right. And I just watched this dude, and this dude, I mean, he went from nervousness to when he hit the stage, it was a wrap. Wow. And then he would have kept going. He would have kept going, and then he looked at me, and then he did his head like this, and I was like, yeah, it's cool, and he was like, all right, I'm done, and got up out the seat. Damn. So what did you learn? What do you what do you learn from working with Scruncho and working with Mark Curry with their uh, both styles? What did you learn from each style? With, with Scruncho was that, that crowd control, mm -hmm. how to control it, to move it. Throw the energy back to them, so they can throw it back to you. Can, can right. you can you explain that to uh, people that are watching the podcast? What does that so, mean? So basically, how that works is like this: is when the crowd is already going crazy because you came out, right? Then they're gonna wait because they want to hear your what you got to say. Then once you hit them with that first joke and that first punch, and they go crazy. And then they throw it right back at you because the energy is so high. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep the energy here. That's what that's what I learned from them. And you and, and you use that to this day. I've seen you recently, man. You, I've seen the evolution of of you being an MC. Do you right. remember that one uh, that one show we did in Stockton with Esau yes. McGraw? Yes. <laughs> Dude, that was a wild show, man. A wild show. It, it was right? you, me, yes. Esau. Who else was on that show? I think Wayne was on that show. Okay, yeah, it was insane Wayne. And it was just a hot room. And yeah. that was your you weren't performing, you were hitting it hard, and that was like your evolution. Yes. Um, were you on with that evolution? Were you on the road before then? Yeah, no. Uh, no. No? Mm -mm. no. Okay, what what made you what, what what was that turn for you to hit to go from when I saw you one time at the punchline where you're kind of quiet? And, right. You know, you weren't who you are right now to where I saw you in Stockton, right. where it was just like you set the bar and you said, because, I was like, okay, I got to follow this. Yeah. And I went in there hard too. I think it, it it's because I studied and watched, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like even, even with you, for example, like when I would see you at the punchline, you the same way, your whole, the way you, you hit them like that, that crowd, cause soon as you come out, you already doing this. You just yeah. snatched my call. <laughs> Literally, I see you do this, and you already going. And then you get into it. So when I seen that, I said, okay, I'm going to take a little bit of that. I'm going to take a little bit of scruncho. Then I watched what Wayne do and how they control mm -hmm. the crowd. And I said, I have to keep that energy this high. So if I keep that energy this high, the next person that's coming, they either going to have to keep it this high too, or it's just going to fall apart. Right, right. You know what I? I think uh, I think what we, you and I, uh, became strong comics is because we used to uh, share the same. Uh, you we used to be in the same trenches at uh, yeah. Touch of Class. Yes. <laughs> so want you want you to tell everybody what the dungeon Touch of Class is all about, my friend? Hey, that right there, the touch, the touch. At that time when when I met you, and you was coming for you. As, as a white dude up in there, you had heart. You had to have heart. That's because... Well, I'm Puerto Rican, but the skin's well, white. That's okay. But you know how I, was. I know what you meant. I know what you meant. <laughs> but you, because they ain't going to look at you as Puerto Rican. Right, right. As soon as, that's, what, that's what I loved about 
touch a class. They judge you as soon as you walk into the oh, building. Oh. Into the yeah. building. How they how they look at you is like this. I pay five dollars to get in here, right? Right. I'll, I'm getting my drinks, my chicken wings, and you better make me laugh because they already think they're funnier than you anyway. Mm -hmm. They already think. No, they, they they don't already think. They know. They know it. They know they're funny. Yeah. And, and and you have to prove yourself or getting get knocked out. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've had my share fair shares where I've tanked right. miserably at the touch and where I've done right. well at the touch. But yeah, that's kind of like uh, how they say in the um, in the South. Uh, there was a lot of uh, chain of uh, chitlin circuits. Ch ch yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Why don't you tell them about the chitlin circuits versus how that is compared to touch a class? There's uh, there's no difference. <laughs> there's no difference. Oh, it's the same thing. Same thing. Oh, okay, cool. So I can do the chitlin circuit. <laughs> yeah. no <difference>. Whew. <laughs> it's, just, it's just spots that those underground spots. Which which good about that? Like the touch, and when you go to these little bars and do your comedy, they're they're going to be honest with you. They're mm -hmm. going to keep it 100 at times, sometimes to 100 because it hurts your feelings. But then you have where you go to like the punchline and you go to Laughs Unlimited, they're paying to see comedy already. Right. So you're already going to get that laugh. You're going to get some of that. But when you go to them chitlin circuits like that, and it's just a bar and they still shooting pool and the TV still on, if you can grab their attention, oh, you good. It's just, it's like lifting weights. It is, you know, lifting comedy weights, and if you can survive in that, it's like a, it's like you're fighting off uh, panthers and tigers, right. and they're all coming at you, and right. you only got you to defend and it, yourself. And it's crazy because I I see a lot of guys, or uh, a lot of the people that be there, or been to the touch and see me there, and they show mad love. They like show crazy love because you made it out of the the, the, the jungle. Yeah, you did. So they, yeah, so man. That's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, quick, fo quick thing, folks. Uh, Drew has a show on August eighth, and he's uh, producing it. He's got who do you have on it? Oh man, I got, uh, I got, uh, who I got? Oh, Michael Calvin Jr., D. Tyler, my man Marcus at Ohio, and then I also got uh, Javon Whitlock too. These are heavy hitters, folks. I, I know them all. I've yeah. worked with them all, and they're all heavy hitters. By the way, you can get your tickets now at Instagram.com slash Guild Park, uh, Guild Theater at O Park. Yeah. So follow him, follow Drew, make sure he has a show. Because you had a show originally with um, Darren Carter. Yes. I yeah. still got that in the books, too. Oh, you do? Darren okay. Darren Carter so is a cool dude, bro. And, but why was that, uh, why was that show uh, canceled? So, because we were going to do it inside the guild. Okay. And when the governor said, ah, we got to shut down indoor things again. Right, right. I text Darren Carter and I was like, hey, bro, we got to shut it down again. I do have an outside venue if you want to do that. And he was like, no, I would rather do it when it's right. Right. Cool. So he texted me back and said, whenever you need me and once they open this back up, we good. Yeah. That's great, man. By the way, here's Maz Hat Matt. It says Drew Billings, and he's up. Yay! That's, that's my man. What's that, man? Oh, look at Captain Bob. He says, you is your show sold out? No, uh, I don't think so. Check it. Check it. We're checking it live, my friend. This is, Let me check, man. This is great. While, while, while he's checking that, we're going to check Darren Carter, because this is what you don't want to miss. Darren Carter is has been around for many years, my friends. And he's oh. another heavy hitter yes. that I highly yeah, recommend I each and every one of you to Actually, watch. I'm sorry. Got, I only got 10 tickets left. I only got 10, 10 tickets. tickets. You can buy them right now here on me, myself, and I. There's the look at, look at, look at, follow the ticker. There it is. Go to Instagram.com slash Guild Theater O Park yeah. Comedy at Esther's. Yeah. So, yeah, man, that's awesome. That's so cool. No, yeah, man. And so, you know how, like, we talk, me and you talk a lot, like you'll hit me up or whatever. But during this whole COVID thing, that's pretty much what happened. So mm -hmm. Darren Carter's already in the book. So when the theater opened back up, he coming right back. <laughs> Someone says, Shindig, Darren Carter will give you a seizure with his flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, what's great about you, man, is you are working with these heavy hitters. You're not just sitting on the sidelines. You're in it with them, yeah. opening for them, featuring for them, going on the road with them. You're learning. And by the way, happy birthday, my friend. Thank happy you. birthday, brother. But you, you're working with these people, with these heavy hitters. So let's, let's show a quick Darren Carter, the party starter. Yes. Let's show a quick clip. Hilarious. Uh, this better not be another Donald Trump. Okay, Coors. I'll be, I'll be fine with that. Yeah, that's good. I'm okay with Coors. Right. That's a great show. It's on. It's called Gangland. They do a documentary on, on different gangs, you know. And uh, Gangland, it's like Facebook for cholos. <laughs> I love Gangland. It's scary, man. I watch it late at night. I know. <laughs> I've actually just embarrassed. I've actually been wearing nothing but boxers, throwing punches towards the front door, like <laughs> imagining if like the dude with the neck tattoo broke into my place. Right? Like, I wish that dude would try to come into my castle. <laughs> <laughs> my wife runs in. Darren, what are you doing? <laughs> Are you playing We Fit? <laughs> because we don't have that. <laughs> Every episode of Gangland, they interview some gang member, right? They hide their face with a bandana. <laughs> They're cloaked under secrecy in the shadows. <laughs> Gangland, tell us about your gang. The guy's like, Hey, you this thing? What's up, puto? <laughs> We're not scared of nothing. <laughs> We run the streets! <laughs> You're not facing the camera. I know, bro, I can't see nothing right now, okay? I'm like... <laughs> I got caught sleeping, I feel stupid. <laughs> I'm not blindfolding myself. Ride or die, ride or die! <laughs> Where do you see your gang going in 10 years? Well, right now, we barely started a MySpace group. <laughs> Killing it. Killing it. So when are you going to have Mr. Darren Carter? So as soon as they open it back up, I told okay. in October. Okay. You know, we got to play this by ear. It's crazy. Right. No, it's it's uh, it's unbelievable how we literally have to live second by second, moment by moment. Who knows what tomorrow will bring, you know? Yeah. Now we got to wear goggles for, for, I, for the COVID mask. Yeah, was, <laughs> you know, now we got to go in like this. Yeah. And just say, oh, oh, hi. Oh, hold on. I gotta go like this. Go like, right. like this. Like two tickets, please. I don't like yeah. two tickets. <laughs> I don't understand that. Man. That's crazy. My question to you is what got you into producing shows? What made you decide to take that jump? So, it's, I got, to, me personally, I got tired of being waited to wait to get booked or see who's gonna book me or who's gonna do this. You know, got tired or, waiting in line. Yeah, or you get bumped out, or nah, not this time. So I just said, forget it. I'm gonna do my own thing. And then I, I know it sounds crazy, but you control the money that way too. No, it's but you have to. If you're yeah. not, if you're guys yeah. like us, we have to do something. We can't. We can't wait for an industry people to come get us. We can't go down to L.A. Uh, and wait in line because we have family up here. We need right. to do something. And what we're doing is producing, and that's great that you decided to do that. And you feel things differently now, huh? Everyone's like, hey, Drew, how's it going, buddy? Because, like, when you say that, these these people, now that I do my own shows, they come to me. So now they come to me. So it feels good for the work. So they'll be like, like how, that's how I met Darren Carter. You know, That's great. Because he heard Mark Curry, Scruncho. Well, you've guys. been working hard at those shows. You've been selling these shows. How, how much? How many? Uh, what's the seat theater at the Guild Theater? And I've been um, averaging like one sixty, one seventy every month. Every month. Wow. And then I sell it out, and then it'd be like two shows. I have to do two shows in one night. Wow. Because you got to kick them out of a theater. You know what I mean? Right. No, that's great out. though. That's such such a from humble beginnings, man. From that open mic. Right. To going to Scruncho, to working with Paul Mooney and the Mark right. Curry, to Darren Carter in the future, and you got this Guild Theater in the palm of your hands now. You got Kevin Johnson yeah. coming to you and I mean, saying, "Dude, yeah, hundred grand, I, I owe that dude a lot, man." That's really great, because he was like, he uh, his words to me was, "So 
would you rather chase the money or you can get it right here? And ever since then, it's been on. That's to you just open my eyes. I hope everyone else that's watching right now just opens their eyes because waiting for the money is not going to come. No, it's not. It's not. It's not going to come. What, whatever it is, waiting for that opportunity, waiting for that moment, it's never going to come. You got to make those opportunities. And I, I live by the mob because I know how like me and you work, right? Our work ethics. Like when we open up for people at the Punch Line or Laughs Unlimited, we juiced. Mm -hmm. like, hey. But then the part I don't like is. And I'll just break it down. You'll see coming to Sacramento, uh, Mike Epps, uh, Steve Harvey, and Cedric the Entertainer all come in a sack. But there's no sack opener. Nobody from sack is opening for these guys. Right. Right. So my motto is if I have Darren Carter or if I have Mark Curry, all the openers, they from Northern Cali, either from Oakland, sack, whatever. That's They're great, man. Openers. Giving a lot of love. Because we don't, when I was in the trenches like that, like we talked about, we weren't getting that. We were like, we don't know you. You ain't putting in no work. Right. Right. I don't, at that part, I, I don't think it's fair to me. You know, at the same time, it is and it isn't. This, the reason why it, it is fair is because um, you're bringing something back to comedy. Right. So what you're doing is you're contributing to comedy with quality shows. Right. And I'm yeah. a fan of quality. I hate you. You and I hate, oh, man, yeah. turn on the light, yeah. you know, turn down the light, scoot right. people up in the front, right. you know, be, have someone come in in there with a high energy or whatever it is as an MC. And yeah. we've seen, and that crappy shows doesn't matter who's funny. If that crowd's not into it, they're not laughing. Yeah. They're not going to, they're not, they're going to be like this the whole night. They're going to be like right. this. And they're gonna be like, I'm not gonna come back here again. Exactly. So you can. I, th I think that's why. I, what I'm what I'm learning is with uh, comics that are producing. It's you're giving back to comedy, like right. the, like this podcast. This is us giving back to comedy, and we're producing because you don't want to be that one guy that's been doing it for you know 20, 25 years saying, "Hey, book me. I, I don't have a room. I don't have any opportunities for you." But you know, but you know, I'll be nice to you so yes. you can book me the headline. <laughs> <laughs> no, they gotta be right, you know. Right, they gotta, right. They gotta have that fire too. Right, you gotta have that fire. But you know, some people, there's a lot of comics out there that you know just have this big head and think like the whole world right. owes them everything. Nobody. And with the time of COVID, it right. doesn't. We all gotta work together. And what no, you're doing, and to. what's that? We have to. Yeah. Right. And what you're doing is you're working together. And by the way, August 8th, Comedy Night at Ethicers Park at www.instagram.com slash Guild Theater Park at O Park. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Oh, wait, we got some stuff. Hold on, I'm sorry. This yeah. is ramping on. We got Cat and Bob. What did Cat and Bob say? I heard some comedians are performing at drive-in theaters. Is this something you're interested in doing? What do you think, Drew? I would be dumb. If it that pays right, I'm there, right? Yeah. Hey, if it's right, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> if it pays right, you're there. That's what do we got to do? You know <laughs> We, we got Maz Hat. Producing takes its own set of skills aside from being a comedian. Both take a lot of. Yes, it does. Oh, it does. It's it's it very does. meticulous. Because very meticulous. Be Thank you, Matt. Appreciate sure. that. You got to be. That's a that's a good one. I, I'm glad he said that because you have to be a director at a show. And then it's just, it's crazy because when you say that and somebody recognizes that, that makes you feel so good because when that you know too. When that show ends, you're already preparing for the next one, the next Right, day. right. You're already, you know, it's funny. I always, uh, you know, I always thought when I was producing shows, I, before I started doing that, I was like, man, I don't want to be in the behind the scenes because, you know, I want to be up in front. I want to be on stage. I want people to know me. But you have to contribute and you have to have it. It teaches you that mindset that this is a business yeah. and you don't want to get screwed. There's so many of us that get screwed over. Oh, it's, you know? It's, it's hundreds There's, of us. The more of us that are producing shows, the less these snakes in the grass will disappear. Exactly. Because me and you know how we want to be treated. So if we do a show and you put it this high mm -hmm. and other comics see that and they show that, you, man, you treat me great. Oh, you, so much love. And they'll, they'll keep coming back. And then it the, grows them. The worst thing I hate, I'm sure you can relate to this. The worst thing a comic hates is after a show, they give you the hey man speech. 
if you folks, if you Bob, Matt, everyone else watching right now, the Hey Man speech. This is the typical shady producer. It's a sold out crowd. You came in there, guns blazing hot, doing a 15, 20 minutes. You're sweating. Everyone's hooting and hollering at your name. And then at the end of the show, what does the book say? What's the hey man speech? Hey man, look. Um, you know, the door, the door really didn't do too well. Like all these people here, <laughs> they out the tickets, really. Like, and, you know, so I can't, you know, I ain't really ain't got that. I mean, I get you on the back end. What is the back end? There is no back. You know, this is the only job where we get the hey man speech. You know, cops don't get the hey man speech, and that's the worst job to be right yeah. now. They they get the paycheck before right. they go out. They they don't get the hey man speech. Politicians don't get the hey man speech. Doctors don't get the hey man. We're the only one. Hey man. Hey man. Kind of low. Yeah, yeah. So that's good that you pay on the on the time on, on the money, man. Oh, that's no. hey, look. Hey. When you come, my you are, here go an envelope with your name on it, everything. Check already done before we even start the show. And another one I hate, my you've been through this too, where you have to follow the producer of the show. <sighs> the whole the club cracking, you ready to go home? And yeah, <laughs> I want to go see my family. Would you follow me over here? Then they yeah. give you the hey man speech. There was this club just uh, B BC before COVID. Gave me that hey man speech up in Sacramento. I'm not going right. to say any names, but I'll say, let's just say it's Tommy T's. But anyways, uh, they, they, they gave me the hey man. What's up? I wonder why. I wonder why. They gave the, the property manager the hey man speech. But they, they deduct me 50 bucks because people didn't show up to the second show. I'm like, that's not my fault. That's not your fault. You paid me to be here. I'm staying. I'll, pay, I'll perform in front of the, the audience. I'll perform in front of you. Isn't there minimum 12, I think, right? Or something like no that. No one showed up second show and right. then they deduct me. And I was like, but you know what? That's why we that's why we have to produce shows. Yeah, that's why. That's it right there. That's why you have to produce shows. Yeah, yeah Captain Bob. It's definitely yeah. shady, my friend. Exactly. It is a definitely shady world that we live in. But guys like Drew Burks, uh, producing quality comedy shows and producing good shows yeah. and yeah. putting money in people's pockets. That yeah. changes the shadiness right yeah, there. It changes the game. Yeah. So what's your what's your advice for new comics just starting out on during this COVID time on online shows? Woo! With my advice to new comics, especially if you start out now, and like it's this the COVID time, is study, study, study. Go on, go on YouTube, find comics that you enjoy, that you like, study what they're doing. Take little bits and pieces of that and then put your own flavor on it. Don't just think you can just click the button, go live, and think you're going to be funny. And make your stuff look right. Don't start doing it in your living room just because you got your iPhone out. Make sure it looks right and it's structured. Everything has to, because you got to make it bigger than what it really is, especially during these times. Because everybody's so, in the house, and so they're sitting there just watching. Right. So what's your advice for after COVID when com when comics starting out online? What's your advice for them when they hit real life again? Uh, my When say it's real world, real life, my advice is humble yourself first. <laughs> yeah. Don't get to getting in there thinking you're just the funniest cat. Cause you're not you're not gonna be the funniest cat. There's no way. And always know your audience. Always. If it's a bunch of women, don't get in there, bitch. Hold this, bitch. Hold that. Cater to the women. If it's a bunch of dudes in there, cater to whatever the audience is. Cause sometimes them them, them jokes you wrote in your book may not work that day. So you got to come quick. That's good, man. Shindig said the best thing. Are you ready for this, Drew? He says, learn to bomb with grace. Ain't that the truth, my friend? Facts. Ain't that the truth? Hey, don't lay down. Don't, don't lay down. yeah, bomb. don't get mad. Learn to bomb. We, before we go, you you got a you got a, a horrible bomb story you, you want to share or are you good? Yeah. 
No, I <laughs> I did this show for um, this union group, and they was they was just a uh, like a company party. Okay. And I was doing my thing. It was cool, and I the lady I said to her, "Which one's your boss?" Right, and she pointed to her boss, and I said, "Well, since you can't say it, I'll say it for you." And then I started just going off, going off on the boss, right? And she laughed, but he wasn't laughing, <laughs> and everybody just got quiet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the corporate gigs, the wonderful, like I don't want to laugh. He works in HR. <laughs> <laughs> you gave yourself the own amen speech. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and. Sorry, you know, I was just playing. You know, what I'm <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man, it, it was I was playing with you. It was a joke. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. That's yeah. awesome. Well, dude, I like we said, bomb gracefully. Just yeah, that's uh, that's Mike Shin. He's a he's a comic out of Reno. So thank you, Mike, for supporting this show. Thank you for being here. Prop, appreciate it. So listen, folks, don't forget August eighth at Esther's Park. Comedy at Esther's Park. You can see the link right there. Get your tickets now. There's 10 people left. 10 tickets left. Get those tickets now. Once it was gone, that's it. That's it. No more because of COVID. I got it. Right. You know, social distance, y'all. Right. Well, Drew, we did an hour, brother. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. So thank you for everything. And uh, thank you for contributing to comedy and producing shows, my friend. Yes. Hey, if you need, hey, my, I'm saying, right, if you need anything from me, you already know. As long as you don't give me the hey man speech, we're good to go. Hey, <laughs> you know when I did your show, right? <laughs> All right, folks, we are out of here. Thank you, Emma Mikers. One more time for Drew Burks, ladies and gentlemen. You have a wonderful day. And don't forget, oh, we got to do this, brother. We got to snap. It's time for some salsa. We got to yeah. do some salsa, salsa, yeah. salsa, salsa, salsa. Me, Mike, something. Down. Get your tickets now, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget. Comedy has some part. Instagram.com slash Field Theater. One more time for Drew Burks. We'll see you next week, folks. Me, Thank you very much. And it's me, Mike Self and I.